Hello everybody, my name is Ian Kirk Patty Cake. I'm an author and robot and today we're going to be answering some more writing questions coming together as a community just talking about the craft and maybe giving hope, maybe killing hope. But before we get started, a couple of things. Number one, if you enjoy what I do on this channel, please remember to like, share, subscribe. I know it's fun to hear that every time. I was going to say something sassy there, but I'm just, I'm not feeling that sassy today. I, have to, I, I think my system is just broken. And then number two, if you'd like to be featured on this channel, check out the links in the description down below. Uh, Lamoy is a monthly prompt contest sort of thing just to have your work featured on the channel as long as you meet the prompt. And then the other thing is Pitch Fit, where once a quarter, I will pitch your guys' creative projects on my channel. And hopefully creators can find new new audiences and audience members can find new creative content. We've had some beautiful submissions, such varying kinds of content. And uh, I think it's a great way to, a, a good thing to check out. So also check out those Pitch Fit videos on this channel if you want to uh, find some new creative work by uh, various new people. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Of course, we're going to our favorite place for writing related questions are writing as always i invite you guys to answer any or all of the questions here because that is actually there's no one answer to pretty much every writing question and having that variation and that conversation and seeing the different ways that people um answer questions or deal with difficulties or the stories that you have from going through what other people are now just going through it really helps show that how big the community is, how diverse the community is, and how many ways there are to um, get through problems. Also, it shows that everybody struggles in all of the same ways, even when it feels like you're the only one. So, you know, looking forward to the conversation. Let's, uh, let's find some good things. Is fancy words, I think it's our fancy words and or grammar needed to write a good story? Um... Fancy words, no. Grammar, sort of. Like, you can have specifically, I want to quantify that. Specifically, if you're writing in a character voice, you have more ability to play with the, the way that you do grammar because you can do grammar um, in first person or in dialogue, how the person themselves speaks. And there are some books that really, really go off the rails with improper grammar specifically to capture the character and that's going to become something that you have to choose to how far you want to go for characterization with bleed more body more it has very specific characterization in the narration and some people might have issues with the way that joey reads very choppy and stream of consciousness and some people wouldn't the same with if you're reading fight club by chuck Palahniuk. grammatically is it perfect probably not but i haven't really studied the grammar but anyway form in that is very untraditional and it's more stream of consciousness. But if you're going more experimental, then you can do that. But also just know that when you play more grammatically or when you do things more grammatically incorrect, it will catch more readers on it. And so it may not be as easy to read. That's, that brings me also to a good point of this one. I put it away because I haven't finished. I've been in a, in a reading slump for a little while, but um, The Butcher Boy by Patrick McCabe. I've had this book for a couple of months and I want to read it. But I was having difficulty getting into it because the grammar is technically not correct if you want to go by strict strict uh, grammar rules. However, it's it <laughs> it's trying it's uh, it's I don't want to say this. I'm short circuiting, obviously. Um, it's very Irish because the author is Irish. <laughs> There's a lot of missing punctuation in that, and so getting into it is sometimes very difficult. Fuck me, said Joe. The face of that is, it was a monkey banging a drum in the window of the fancy goods shop with a chin bigger than its head. Farmers drove off to the mountains with big blonde dolls saying mama roped to the roof racks. Higher tracks of slush webbed the street and there was music all night long in the upstairs of the tower. Someone was battering a Nat King Cole to death and an accordion wheezed, wheezing help half strangled. There were children and a dog on a white fair green in the town band marched again on its fourth lap of the of the town as if it was condemned to wander for all eternity until all of the tunes came right it was a powder country ice flows ice flows bobbing on the freezing water of the river 
So like, if you looked at that paragraph specifically, it's missing a lot of actual proper grammar in it. However, this also won the Booker Prize in 1992 because technically this is also literary fiction, so you can get away with stuff that you wouldn't necessarily get away with um, with genre books. Also, it was 1992. So it all depends on what you want. Technically, you can have bad grammar if it's a stylization choice, and that is made a very deliberate stylization choice, and it won a prize. But um, getting experimental can be hit or miss. It all depends on what you want to do with your story. Story driven versus character driven. Watching a video on YouTube and got into talking about a certain story uh, offshoots being more character driven when it should be story driven, but that got me to realize I have no idea what the difference is between the two. What I generally do is go with whatever idea pops into my head and write around the idea, but the whole story is driven and character driven has me completely confused. So the definition of these is pretty, pretty simple. With story driven, the story itself is driven forward by actions taking place in the story. So character has to accomplish goal and everything that the character is doing, um, is to accomplish the main comp, the main um, climactic goal at the end. And so it is that, that goal that moves the thing forward. Now in replacing the characters, since the characters may not be that important since you're focused on the end of the goal, you could probably replace just about any of them and there's not really much of a difference. If you think of like a generic murder mystery, the characters themselves don't really matter because the goal is just to, to solve this murder and you're going through all of the steps. Alternatively, a character-driven story is a story that moves forward and is driven by the character, focuses on the character's development, the character's goals, the events of the story revolve around the character's choices. Because a character-driven story is very much pushed forward by the character and all of the actions that take place are because of the character, place to the characters and the story will completely change. So it's driven by the character and often there is a major character change somewhere in there or there is a character question that the character has to touch on. I would say that um, Body War is probably a character driven story because the whole thing is Joey's transformation and her tethers to her father and uh, she eventually has to make a decision to change at the end and um, the next two books are also very much having to do with her own internal character changes dealing with grief specifically. So oh. does that help? Can I drop high school to become a writer? Technically, yes, you can. Should you? Are you getting anything out of high school? I'm not trying to give any sort of lifelong advice here, but if you're not getting anything out of high school, why not go find something else that you would rather do? But also don't expect to become a famous author. I would not, I would not recommend just quitting everything, assuming that you'll become an excellent author and to just make a million dollars because most authors have a secondary job, whether it is their teachers at a university or a high school or some other kind of school or their editors or copy editors or copy writers for businesses or their newspaper people or their stay at home with parents. Most writers have a secondary job. So dropping out of high school does to become a writer also means that you have to find something else to supplement your income with for a while, if not forever, because very few authors um, make enough money to completely quit working something else entirely and or it takes a while to get there. But also don't stop uh, working on your writing. How do I get better at writing? I'm just a student who is starting to dive into writing short stories from time to time and as I've been reading the novels lately I copy some phrases into notes that I like that I'd like to use but I feel bad because I have to come up with something original and I just can't blind blandly copy from them. I know the key to getting better is to read, practice, and all that jazz, but what do you write for practice? Do you just read so much or do you just read so much that eventually you'll know how to come up with your own phrases that sound good? Part one, yes. You kind of just keep reading until you start figuring out how characterization works, and you also consistently continue to write. So writing is the application of what it is you're observing when you're reading. Another thing that you want to do that takes your reading to the next level. Um, is when you're reading and you find a sentence that you like, don't just write down the sentence or the paragraph, but slow yourself down and actually try to analyze what it is you like about that, that sentence. Is it characterization? Is it description? Is it a building? Is it a person? Is it voice? 
pick out, identify, label what it is that you like about that sentence and then figure out why it works or what exactly. Oh, I like the way that this author uses more macabre descriptions to help set the mood for this specific moment and this specific phrase in this paragraph stands out to me for setting the atmosphere that kind of stuff because when you actually it's it's a sort it's a way of reverse engineering what you're reading and as you force yourself to slow down and recognize and verbalize what it is that you like about that sentence or those sentences if you do whole paragraphs which i did when i was doing undergrad i would take whole paragraphs out and i would say this is what i like or this is what i don't like um it's one of the ways that I read now, so it kind of ruins uh, hobby reading. But those that is how you start internalizing and getting better. And then you just continually practice. You continually write. And you get through different projects. The more you write and the more you challenge yourself, the more you put stuff for people to respond to. And then you, you work on your voice or your craft. You will get better. But... Reading is one thing, analyzing is another thing, and writing continuously and analyzing your writing or having others, you know, analyze your writing and then you look at the critique versus what you wrote and what you were trying to do, all of those things combine into making you a better writer. You really, I would say you really can't do one and get really, really good, but you can probably get away with just doing one or two of these and just improve at slower increments. I've recently started getting serious about writing. What are some mistakes that I should avoid? Could be grammar, formatting, plot, character, craft, anything, any common mistakes or tips and helps. I self-publish and plan to keep doing it. Well, you just said that you just started getting serious about writing and you self-published. I would say the first major mistake is sharing stuff or self-publishing before you're ready. So I know a lot of people go with self-publishing specifically because when they're done with something, they wanna get it out to the audience right now. But I think rushing your story to the marketplace is a mistake because there are a lot of self-published books that never see beta readers, that never see editors, that never, they don't take the time to be polished or be seen by other voices. And, and so I think setting a window for how long until opening gives you a chance to get better read beta readers, to get review copies ready, to do final edits, and also to build hype for your book before release so that it can be known before it gets out there. Because one of the hardest things is getting people to notice your book, especially as it's on its way out there. You got to build the hype. You got to build the attention. You got to build your name. There's just so much to consider that when you just thrust your project onto the market, whether it's a first draft or a second draft, often very early drafted in those cases. Well, now you're building your professional profile and what people are going to know you for based on that rushed to market thing. So I would recommend against that. Um, avoid looking at book reviews if it bothers you. It bothers everybody. But if you're going to be tempted to like respond to people as opposed to just tell your friends how you feel, don't look at book reviews. It's very, very difficult. Um, another thing that is fairly important is that almost everything in the writing community is very subjective. Everybody has different tastes and different choices and different things that they like and dislike and different rules that they abide by and different voices and different audiences even that Almost everything has a caveat of this works for me, uh, but it might not work for you. And so play around with any advice that you get and feel free to discard any advice that you get. Also, don't underestimate the power of really good creative partners that will look at your work and help you edit your work and understand where you're coming from and give you good feedback. Advice for someone starting off. I have ideas for worlds and characters and stories, but I've never written anything before. I understand that the first things I write are going to be terrible purely due to inexperience. What advice can anyone give to anyone attempting to start their first story? So number one, uh, don't publish your very, very, very first story, first draft of anything. <laughs> also, uh, obviously be careful with who you give your stuff to as critique partners because some people just want to tear you up and other people won't. Everybody has a different style of critiquing and there are people out there who are not invested in you who will possibly just try to tear you up if they can because i don't know people do things that are un unnice sometimes and um 
The other thing is don't let yourself get stuck in your own perfectionism. And I just did an interview on this. I'll link it down in the description below. But a lot of authors get stuck on perfectionism where they think that what comes out of their fingers the first time must be perfect. And if it's not, they're either a failure or they have to continually write the same thing over and over and over again until it is absolutely as perfect as they imagine it, as they imagine the vibe in their head. Because the vibe in your head is different than the thing that's on the paper that you're trying to induce the image and the feelings to all come through in all of these words. So continue to write even if you don't necessarily like what you're doing right now. Continue through the scene, continue to completion. Um, and I recommend do not just continually edit the same piece over and over and over again, the same chapter one over and over and over again. Let yourself finish and then come back because you learn so much about your longer works or your stories by finishing the draft. I cannot highlight that enough. I want to know in the comments what your guys' suggestions are for somebody just starting off. What would have helped you early on in your writing or what has been one of the most beneficial pieces of advice that you have gotten? I would love to hear that. I feel like I absorb nothing from books. I used to read a lot when I was a kid, but when I got older, I stopped. So I've kind of been living off the stuff I learned many years ago. Now I'm trying to get back into the habit of reading, but I don't really feel like I can learn anything from passively reading. If I analyze sentence patterns and everything, I cannot enjoy the book. Welcome to the struggle. After I finish the book, if I asked myself, I wouldn't be able to list anything that is useful to my writing. It's nothing serious, just a hobby. Do you pick up sentence patterns subconsciously or anything like that? What do you really learn about uh, from books that you can apply on your writing? Um, so this kind of goes with what I mentioned before with analyzing the book, and it's kind of how I do the the book reviews on this channel and it's why I do the book reviews on this channel the way that I do them. So if I'm really trying to get down to the brass tacks of analyzing a book and picking things out of a book, especially like plot structure and all of those, is you have to actually write it down. By breaking it down and writing it down, you're forcing yourself to slow it down and spot what is happening. So one of the reasons why I do the plot summaries like I do for the stories that I read on this channel <coughs> is one to give you guys as much context as I can in case you haven't read the books because I want my critiques at the end to make sense. So I give as much context as I can by pulling out what came across to me as key moments. Now the author may watch those videos and see me pointing at things as key moments that were not actually key moments to be noticed. But that just shows you where my attention was as a reader. And so you as the author, if that was your book that I read, then you can say, OK, so this person saw these things as stand out and they gave these weights to this thing. And that's what was conveyed. That is one of the most important things that you'll learn when you start doing um, critiques is you start to see how people different. All these different people are interpreting your work, what things stand out in your work. Um, what is signaling readers and what information is being signaled to readers and you can determine whether that is what you meant to happen or not meant to happen. I've had stuff that it's like if somebody gets offended by something well yeah that was kind of expected so the fact that I got a response back that said hey I was offended by this I'm like I don't okay that's a bad guy so <laughs> I'm not super worried about that. If somebody says um, I had this one story where this was years ago now um, people in the group were saying that they were getting these weird sexual vibes between these characters and um, they were like, you might want to watch that. But those weird vibes were exactly meant to be there. I just didn't tell, <laughs> tell them about the relationship of those characters. So by having that response, I was able to see if I was sending the information that I wanted to send or not sending the information that I wanted to send. Now, because people bring their experiences and their backgrounds and their own analytical um brains to your stories you're likely going to have a bunch of different responses the important thing is to know who your target audience is and if your target audience is absorbing the information that you want them to have because you're always going to have different things this especially point comes to me with the dead end drive it's been very interesting to see the dead end drive book reviews compared to the body more book reviews because the dead end drive book reviews it being a dark comedy um, it being a satire that makes fun of a lot of different things is obviously much more polarizing. So it's got more high numbers and low numbers and less mid-range numbers. 
but body more has many more mid-range numbers as opposed to low numbers or a bunch of five stars. It's very three and fours. So um, that's interesting. And that is one of the things that you'll have to pay attention to based on what you're doing as well is those are those responses taking into consideration what it is you're trying to do. I think I hopped bots there. Anyway, going back to the thing here of just passively absorbing information and how I got into this breakdown thing, you have to write down and get into the mindset of studying if you're going to study, which is one of the reasons why reading books is so difficult for me other than um, difficult for me to do for pleasure. Uh, other than if it's like super well written to the point that I just forgot that I'm even going to analyze it like uh, with Carrie and Comfort with with Hell House when I'm just having a good time, then I'm not really paying it that much attention to them. Otherwise, you need to slow it down. You need to write it down and you as as you write stuff down, you'll start seeing the patterns. I did this too with movies when I was planning my movie script. Um, I played some of the videos, movies that were going to be comp titles like Stepford Wives and The Watch. And I wrote down plot summaries as the story went on. So like what was happening, what these characters were doing. And then I broke that down into the three act structure to go, okay, here is the start of act one. Here's the end of act one. When things changed, here's the start of act two. Here's the end of act two when things changed. And you mark down those major events. The same thing, like I said to the other person, um, is you also mark down Phrases that you like, phrases that you don't like, if character relationships are working, if they're not working, tell me why it is, put it into words, why these characters are not working for you or why they are working for you. What hints, what information are they telling you that you are not jiving with or you are jiving with? How are they expressing that they're in a relationship without saying that they're in a relationship? Or is the person, the, the author, the narrator straight up telling you this is our relationship, but the exposition feels like it works really well. This flashback works really well. Why does it work really well? Why do you like it? And by putting your thoughts into words, by forcing yourself to write about what it is you like or don't like and why it works or doesn't work, you start internalizing how to do that. And you just kind of continuously do this. It is a study process to learn the craft. So reading can seem super passive until you start breaking it down and making your brain work to to rip apart what it is you're looking at and then it becomes a very active um learning process and it really gets into your writing so that's my response to that insecure about writing just because let's look at this one just because it's beneficial to us all i can't say anything for like the big mega players at all i can't even say anything for anybody out of me but i'm pretty sure that every creative at any point anywhere but every creative that I know feels insecure about what they make at some point. And often it has to do with you having value for that thing. <clears throat> so the short version of the question is that I'm not sure what to do when I feel insecure about my writing. A few years back, I noticed that I daydreamed far more than a lot of people, and I used my daydreaming to build whole universes, a world that, that I believed was fascinating characters. With fascinating characters. Now, a few years later, I have finally finished writing the second draft of my book, and I've proceeded to begin editing. I went to Quora to ask how to find a beta reader, but accidentally used the wrong term, as they're called something else in the language I spoke when talking to a close friend of mine. I asked how to find a beta reader anyway and what to do if they stole my book when I gave it to them. I got responses from someone who is a professional healthcare worker, an author, and a graduate from some special university in 1970-something. I can't remember the exact words, but he said that he assumed that I was new to writing and said that despite not meaning anything rude, he said that I probably hadn't written something worth stealing. I know that it's not supposed to hurt, but the wording made me feel belittled in a way and now I'm more insecure about my writing than before well <laughs> I mean I mean yes this sucks and you'll hit you'll hit people like this um all over the place who are going to discourage you or just be harsher with what they're saying who they don't have an investment in you they don't have any reason to be careful with what they're saying to you and it especially gets worse once you actually start getting readers like beta readers or beta readers a little bit less um but beta readers can still be very harsh um, but book reviews more as people bring in what they like and what they don't like and they don't owe you anything. They're going to tell you whether they liked your story or not or they're at least, if they don't tell you that they didn't like it, 
they might drop you in the did not finish section and you'll be like, oh, it's amazing. Or you'll get like a decent milk, milk warm, milk warm. <laughs> like a middle of the ground review, but you'll be like, I don't see any of what you're saying you see in there. Literally, what? And then it'll hurt your feelings because you put more development into that than what they're saying that they saw. There's just a lot of this, and it can make you feel very insecure about your writing all of the time. There are so many pitfalls for authors to make you question um, whether what you're doing is worth it or if you have any skill at all because there is so much subjectivity and so much personal enjoyment, but also just think about your own experiences with reading or with movies or with video games that you enjoyed but other people didn't enjoy, and especially stuff that was like super disliked by a lot of people, but you liked it, you didn't have a problem with it, and there are just... People can be very mean. So, um, and it, not even just getting into mean, but absorbing these opinions and thoughts of from somebody else on something that is very intimate to you. Uh, it's, it's, I think, kind of like reality testing. And in a way, it's then very easy to kind of lose track of reality as well, because you're now seeing the world through somebody else's eyes and somebody else's experience by reading how they experienced your book. And you go, well, wait a second, that's not what I see at all, but somebody else sees this other thing. And now you have to determine whose reality is real. And then if you've got a bunch of people that are going, well, this is garbage, then you're like, wait a second. If a bunch of people are saying it's garbage, then I must be garbage. And then you get insecure. And then there's also you getting used to seeing your own words. I call this the author whiplash. And I always go through it on every single project I have where I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, I hate this. Oh, this is pretty good. Oh, I hate this. What am I even doing with my life? And it's just a a tennis match back and forth of hate, self-hate and mild ego and self-hate and mild ego. It never ends. Uh, all you can do is try to fortify yourself and learn coping mechanisms to push yourself through when you're feeling low and find friends that you can confide in when you're feeling low so that you don't feel so alone. There's this one quote that I think really helps with understanding where the insecurity with writing comes from, especially with like handing your writing to somebody else and then hearing what their opinions are of it. And it is from Brian Masters in Killing for Company, a case of Dennis Nilsson. He's one of my favorite authors, by the way. And he said, all of us conceal in conversation clues to personality, which we happily reveal on paper because the added distance of writing lends protection and encourages the risks of intimacy. So. One of the reasons why I think that we get so insecure and especially so emotionally volatile, responsive to responses to what we're writing is because everything that we write is somehow inspired by our emotions, what's important to us, the, the different scenarios we see in life that we think are important enough to write about, to want to share with other people. And now other people are making value judgments based on what is important to you, more or less, different parts of your personality or your life or your experiences one way or another. You've spent, like this person, you've spent years developing these ideas and writing them on paper and sitting alone in your room. And these are values that are part of you one way or another. I'm not saying, you know, all of Alex's values are my values, but he as a person is a culmination of experiences that I've had and part of a POV that I have seen and expressed as a human. So that's one of the things that can be so difficult with accepting responses to what we have written. Um, anyway, short answer, short response to this is just writing is personal. Insecurity is going to happen probably forever when it comes to anything that is of value to you. And all you can do is learn coping mechanisms and try to fight, uh, try to balance, I should say the insecurity with moments of triumph and um, get at least one good friend or family member or loved one that you can rely on and share with because working in the arts is very tolling and you are going to need to reality test with people that know you and know reality and aren't, aren't just going to feed your ego but will be there when you are emotionally volatile or weak. How do I stick to one story without going to another? Discipline. That is really all that it can be as you go, I'm only allowed to work on this story until it is done. And then you, you can reward yourself with working on the next story if that's what you want to do. But make a system for yourself. I'm going to 
write this first draft and then edit it before I can move on to the next one, or I'm going to write first draft and then move on to the next one to draft and edit at the same time, whatever you got to do. But the only way to get through this is to determine discipline. I'm going to finish this done. And that's pretty much what I do. I have a list over there on the wall of the order in which I'm going to work on projects. Um, it's not even... Yeah, it, it's not even the order in which uh, they're being published because Cain and Abel comes before Bodymore 3, but I still have Bodymore 3 before I work on Cain and Abel since I'm still going to so I'm stay in that universe. Um, but make a list of your own expectations and only work on what you're allowed to work on unless you're maybe doing a breather room between different sets of things. But otherwise, that's all you can do. Discipline, tell yourself, this is it do it there's no easy pill too ambitious slash risky of for my first story this sounds too familiar i have wanted to publish a story for years however i am quite nervous about the kinds of stories i enjoy and how that whether or not they are feasible considering i have no past experiences or connections i like dark comedies particularly particle particularly those on that that verge on absurdism However, I am aware that dark comedies are extremely difficult to pull off and even harder to market with no past in writing. So should I go for it? This ambitious story, is it worth, is the gamble worth it? Is it, so first question from me to you is, is writing the story worth it to you? Do you find it important to get this story written? For me, Dead End Drive is my debut novel. It was the first major project that I wanted to work on. And um, it's a dark comedy, horror comedy, uh, with some sketchy characters that make fun of stereotypes, all kinds of stereotypes, and they all die to the vices associated to their stereotypes. Uh, was it an easy sell? No, it wasn't, because it is, it's mildly edgy. <laughs> Is it a lot of fun? Yes. Was it important for me to tell that story? Yes, it was. I was obsessed with that for more than 10 years, and I knew that I was going to write it before I even started writing it. It was entirely a passion project, and it was worth it to have it written and to have it out there now, because I think it is a fun story, and it's a meaningful story, even if I go through stages of, ugh, my heart, but it's a fun story. Um, so you have to decide what it is worth to you. If if the idea in your head for this dark comedy is worth the time and effort it is going to take to write it, and also know that it may not be the first book that you publish, because also the first book not slash novel that you finish, first project that you finish, may not be the first one that you publish. That is also a thing, and you may end up publishing something like this later once you have that backlog. But in general, dark comedy, comp fiction comedy, and satire are very hard to find agents for and very hard to find publishers for because they're just difficult. Um, when I was looking for Dead End Drive, there are there were so few agents that actually listed humor that was not, that was fiction on their search lists or their lists of what they would represent. So just in general comedy, unless it's like a romance comedy is much harder to find people for. But absurdism is fairly popular, especially with Bizarro and um, I think dark comedy absurdism fits very well into Bizarro if you're going to look in that direction. There are a bunch of small presses that do that as well. So look at those. But again, is it worth your time is the first question. Number two, go for it. So with that said, I think I'm going to end it here being the last question. So I look forward to your answers down in the questions below. Also, with that being the last question, I would like to know what your first story was and do you consider it to be ambitious an ambitious project is it a seven or 12 part series that has just this monster arc going across everything and decades of work is it was it a standalone was it a risky genre i would love to know what your project was what your questions about your project were before you started and uh did it did it feel like a really big deal when you got started on it let me know down in the comments below all that said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. And remember, Bleed More, Body More finally comes out on Sunday. Happy spooky season. Happy Halloween. And don't die. 
Was that Wayland Cross in the trunk? Do you know, or is that something that's still being figured out? The person in the trunk was not Wayland Cross. Is he in trouble? We don't know who did it, but as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. I'm not talking to the badges, I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk. Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left, plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry, flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right?